All right, this is the unboxing of the Azo CS2740. This top box came pretty quick from Adorama to Guam, I think in like two days. This is actually uh, just a monitor hood. With the CS2740, it does not come with the hood. So I actually had to purchase this hood from Adorama because B&H is out of stock. And don't mind the noise in the background, family is home. And this is like the only time I can do the unboxing. Put this knife here, and I did my best to try to clear the area, uh, just so I can mount the two monitors, sorry, mount the ASO next to the, um, and that's the correct way to pronounce it, by the way. ASO, not ISO, a lot of people mispronounce it. Okay, so this is actually 189 for the hood. Let's put the receipt in the box. And this is by ASO, which I asked our, uh, Japanese friend Tomo, who always shows us around Japan, he said the correct way to pronounce it is Azo. Monitor hood. Okay, so let's get this. I wonder if I should get this open first or the monitor. Let me see if we can just slide it out like this. The cool thing about this is it is magnetic. Oh, good packaging. So it is magnetic and it'll fit on the uh, monitor. Okay, I think I should put this away until I get the monitor out. All right, we'll put this on when I get the monitor out of the box. Okay, this will have to be over there. All right, I have my notes here. I just would like to say that uh, a lot of photographers think that the most important thing, uh, sorry, a lot of photographers think that the most important tool in your workflow or post-processing is having, <laughs> my daughter's playing outside, having a good calibrated monitor. And for the longest time, I don't wanna cut the monitor. For the longest time I've been using IMAX since 2010, I believe. I started with an iMac, and it wasn't even 5K, it was 2K. Then I had the iMac, I believe 2015, and then this is the 2017. So this is the first time I'm actually getting a monitor that has good accurate color. And this is a 4K monitor. I actually wanted a higher PPI because I'm used to Apple Retina, but a lot of people still say the 2560 by 1440 is good for full editing. Got this from B and H, and it looks like color management information. Here we have the cables. This looks like display port to, yeah, this looks like display port cable which I'm not gonna use. I'm gonna use the MacBook Pro 16 inch. And the reason why I'm getting another monitor is I'm selling the iMac, but I'm gonna do a quick comparison. I'm gonna use the MacBook 16 inch because the M1 Pro, that's really quick for video editing, photo editing, and the iMac's been kind of slowing down. Uh, this is a power cable, which we're gonna need and hook up. Next cable is the USB to use USB to regular USB A, it looks like, or this could just be for the USB hub. Another cable here, and this is the USB C to USB C cable, which I'll use for the MacBook Pro 16 inch. And looks like another similar cable, but it's not, doesn't look like it's USB 3. The other one is blue, so. This looks like regular USB 2, and this is USB 3. And it comes with, I got the package. A lot of people were saying just to get the x right and don't get, get the one package. Uh, but I got the EX4, uh, comes with it. Calibrated, skin calibrated um, when I set up the ASO. Okay, hopefully nothing's damaged here. Big thick styrofoam, putting this here. With the new versions of the ASO monitors, there's actually a handle here that you can use to lift up. And I believe this is the receipt from B&H. 
So I'm gonna see if I can lift this up. Close the knife and put it here. I don't even think there's room. I know this thing's pretty heavy. Okay. Yeah, this is a pretty heavy monitor. Ooh, let's see the styrofoam broke a little bit during shipping. Oh yeah, you know how they toss it around. They don't care. Okay. That looks really good. A lot of uh, foam everywhere during shipping. Need to take the Dyson to vacuum this. Um, but I know you can actually rotate it like this, but probably need to put it all the way up. But this is the back of it. Now, as you can see, HDMI, display port, USB C. Looks like this is for a USB hub, USB 3, and regular USB 2. And then here in the side, there's two, uh, two more USB 3 ports. Okay, we didn't show it, but during shipping, some of the bezel came out, but we snapped it back in. So what I was trying to do is bend it up all the way here, then you're able to turn it. Oh, stretching the power cord, but all the way like this in portrait mode. But I'm gonna put it back and I'm gonna see if I can hook up the 5K to this monitor. Let's check if the power is up. Power button is here, it's touch sensitive. Okay, so there's no signal. The USB-C actually charges your MacBook 60 watts, which is pretty interesting. So when I plug in my MacBook, it should be charging. For now, I'm gonna see if I could connect USB-C to the iMac. See, we could do a quick comparison. Okay, it's turning on. And it looks like it's doing a mirror right now. Let me see if I can do a mirror. Okay, I can tell already the resolution. Okay, so it seems like it's doing a mirror of the resolution from this, which looks like it's huge, 2560 by 1440 it looks like. And I guess this is where you change the input. This is where you do the different calibration. Whoops. Still learning how to use this. How do we exit? Second one, user. Adobe RGB, sRGB, third button, F1, F2. Oh, well, this is the brightness. Just if you want to increase it. It's really showing purple 300. The resolution a little bit, this is too big for me. So this would be... twenty-five sixty by 1440. 
think this looks normal. Versus this looks a bit small. Yeah, this looks a bit small. And text here. Let me just see if I can click done. Looks to be clear on both. Okay, let's go to YouTube. We'll do a quick color uniform uniformity test. There is a lot of IPS glow. I don't know if Garfi can get an angle like this. There's a lot of IPS glow here in the edge of the monitor compared to here. Yeah, I see the glowing in the bottom left. And then if you look at the iMac, there's not that much glow. Um, but let's look at the screen, the screen uniformity. Okay, it's 4K. So yeah, a lot of, let me turn off this light here. A lot of IPS glow. Can we just have to fast forward? So the grays are definitely different. As you can see on the iMac, it looks really dirty here. Not that uniform, but on the Azo, it looks really uniform. Yeah, you can tell the Azo is really clean. The iMac almost looks like it has like a greenish tint to it a little bit. But yeah, compared to the Azo, it's very, very balanced. Okay, it's at 90% white, 95. I remember I increased brightness on the Azo. Let's see if we can match the IMAX. Yes, the Azo is very uniform. Okay, let's see if you can do like a local dimming test. So I don't know if you can see this. It looks like there's backlight bleed on the Apple. And there isn't any backlight bleed on the Azo, just a lot of IPS glow. So let me make this half brightness. Let me see if I can lower down this brightness. Lower down to 100. And then if you do straight on to the Azo, if you do straight on, you don't really see it. You just see a little bit of IPS glow. Not really a scientific test, but it's just interesting. Let's see what this does, F2. Oh, I guess user settings. Okay, let's see if we can look at some photos. And so this is Ali. Allison with her presence. There's slight color, slight difference in color. It seems like Ali's skin color it seems like it's more accurate on this monitor. More looks a little bit to the reddish side. This looks more whitish. It could be the white balance. Okay, D and G. Again, it looks a little bit more colorful on the Azo compared to the Apple. I mean, what do you think, Arfi? Maybe stand, stand here and this. What do you think, like which? Wish it looks nicer to you. This one is dot, the IPS glow is bothering me. But look at her face. I mean, which is a better image, you think? This looks a little bit like reddish warm, right? You can tell the, you, you can tell that there's a difference, right? Like maybe more colorful? What do you think?
it seems like you know how like the highlights are really bright here the highlights on Phoebe's face is really bright and then when you look at the highlights here it looks like it's more controlled for some reason right like I guess the tonal range but what about the IPS clothes is it's a lot right okay so I'm gonna put on the hood it's uh definitely the Apple 5k looks more sharper it looks cleaner the azo seems like I can see colors in Phoebe's forehead that I don't see in the Apple um, but here's the hood it is magnetic put this to the ground and it is very soft inside magnets here this should fit um, this monitor did some research slap it on oh this is already on all right so i'm gonna mess around with this monitor a little bit more if i need to film any more comparisons i'll do that um but i do like the colors on the azo versus the apple 5k uh, this is default uh, profile but uh, the ips glow is it's a lot when i turn my head and i need i need to look at look at it straight on only if i look at it straight on is good but if i'm standing up like this it looks bad let me see if i can show you so straight on like this really good Straight on like this, really good. But as you stand up, there's a glow. All right, so the differences that I found between the CS and the CG is the CG actually has a built-in calibrator that comes up from the top. It'll just like come out and do the calibration. That's the CG series. The CS doesn't have it. The CG comes in with the hood and I actually had to purchase this separately. The CG has a brighter, uh, higher contrast ratio and actually shows that it has P through gamut. But HLG and PQ curve can be installed. And why did I chose ASO? Because with a five year warranty, made in Japan, great build quality. As you can see, it survived. The bezel was coming out when you received it, but I popped it back in and everything's good. Um, I try to do a uniformity test, local dimming, IPS glow. I don't like the IPS glow on this monitor. You have to look at it straight on. But this is what ASO support sent me. Instructions on how to upgrade this monitor. And what was interesting is when looking at the instructions, and maybe I'll screen record myself doing this, is you get the PQ Curves HLG BT2020, BT709, and DCI-P3. And ASO support was telling me that the DCI P3 is not like the proprietary Apple P3. It's similar to like a projector, but it comes close. And the percentage for this monitor is around, I guess like 98% P3. But I need to install this um, monitor setting. So I think it should be easy to do to get all of these uh, presets. All right, we have all the presets installed. I'm going to calibrate DCI P3, clicking on calibrate now. And as you can see, it's a Spider X EX4. So Azel calls it EX4, but basically it's just a rebranded uh, Spider X. And I believe Spider X Elite and Pearl is basically the same. It's just the software that's different. So of course you have to align it in the middle. And the screen, um, I already clicked on calibrate and I'm fast forwarding the video, but the screen is actually pretty thick. It's a pretty solid screen. So I wasn't worried about scratching it or anything. Uh, when it gets to the gray part, it is pretty cool. You'll see the gray dots line up on the right hand side. Yeah, measuring different shades of gray and calibration is complete. And you'll see the target 
and the result, which is pretty close, and the contrast is pretty high at 822. And I think the reason why the contrast is high is because in administrative settings, the DUE uh, calibration was set to brightness. I was reading online that default is actually uniformity. And here we have all the settings installed inside the monitor. That's what they call it, hardware calibration. It is stored. This is where the styrofoam broke during shipment. And I'm going to show you the actual damage that I found. There's a crack that goes down. I circled the design. That's not um, a defect. That's actually part of the uh, design. And this is the proper way to put on the hood. I was actually putting it on wrong in the video. The tabs actually need to go in front of the bezel and that's how it locks on. The panel's perfect. Uh, again, when the hood is on, you can hardly see the crack going down. The hood kind of hides it, but panel is in perfect condition. This is zoomed in text for the CS2740. And this is the text on the Apple iMac. So very similar, uh, 4K and 5K, not that much of a difference. Uh, text 5K does look sharper if you actually really look for it. But other than that, 4K and 27 inch uh, for this ASIL is fine. So what I did is I set the DUE, Display Uniformity Equalization, to prioritize uniformity. Uh, because when I got the monitor, it was on brightness. And it seems that it is more uniform than the other setting, which is brightness compared to the iMac 5K. As you can see the iMac 5K, there's a lot of dark shading around the screen in the middle and the top and the left. And here, here's a darker shade of gray. Then going back to the Azel, it is like super uniform. If you made it to this far, thank you uh, so much for watching the whole video. I know it's kind of long, but was really excited unboxing this uh, Azel. It's my first Azel monitor, so I can't wait to do uh, more YouTube videos editing on this machine. Thank you everyone, stay safe and please subscribe.